15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy, Mike Rashid, and this is the Lions, Owls, and Elephants podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, my man, Kevin Jennings. He is a serial entrepreneur, very wise dude, and I'm glad to have you on, sir. How you doing? I'm good, my brother. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. No doubt. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, man, so you have a lot going on. We had some conversations earlier today about, um, you know, you used to play football, and then you transitioned into real estate, yep. right? And at a young age, you hit... The millions, right? Yeah, early, yep. Yeah, t t tell us about that. Yeah, so when I got out of college, um, 2004, like we talked about, like I couldn't, I knew football wasn't gonna be a reality for me. Mm -hmm. I knew, you know, athletics wasn't it. Um, so I kind of let those dreams die. And then I looked at, um, you know, what I was gonna do next. And so I started working in construction. While I was working in construction, like I said, this is like 2004, early 2004, real estate was booming in South Florida, because I'm from Miami. So real estate is going crazy. Um, I linked up with a couple friends of mine, and we started buying and flipping houses in, uh, in Miami. How, how did you have the money to buy houses that young? So here's the crazy thing. Like back then, so it was, it was twofold. So I started with actually buying government properties. So mm -hmm. I was buying HUD homes. HUD homes are foreclosure properties owned by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. These are homes that were originally financed using FHA loans but went into foreclosure because the mortgage defaulted. So HUD, which backs FHA, FHA mortgages, puts the home up for sale. Breaking all of that down, somebody bought a home using an FHA loan. They stopped making mortgage payments and the home got foreclosed on. Well, the lender got all of their money because the government, the FHA loan, HUD, backed that loan. That's why on every FHA loan, you are paying mortgage insurance because you have to pay that for the lifetime of the loan now when you get an FHA loan, but it's because the government is actually backing that loan. So if someone stops making their payments, the government actually steps in, pays off the lender. The lender walked away happy because they got their money and now HUD owns that home. Well, HUD is not in the property management business. They don't want a bunch of inventory of homes, so what are they gonna do? They're gonna sell it off to the public. That means you or I could buy a HUD home. So back then, HUD was selling houses in, in low-income neighborhoods for literally like $100. What? Yeah. How, why? It's kind of like, um, you know they do in Baltimore where you hear people talk about buying houses in Baltimore or Detroit for $100 or $10. Hmm. Essentially, they were doing the same thing, but in, in the hoods all over America. They were doing a lot of that. Why? Nice. What What's the logic behind that? They couldn't, they had all these properties mm -hmm. that they didn't rent out anymore, mm -hmm. and they were sitting vacant, and they became eyesores on the community. So HUD would sell them online to investors and put stipulations on how you had to rehab them and who you had to sell them to and all of that. Um, but they would literally almost give you the houses. So that's how we started was getting HUD homes. Then we rehab those and sell them, and then we just started. Did you did you need stuff. to approve any like? Would they just give it to anybody or how? It they just had seemed too good to be true. Nah, so HUD had like they had like two different criteria, if I remember mm. correctly. So one, they had one program that was strictly for owner occupants. Mm. So like, if you were gonna buy a home and you were gonna live in it, they were gonna give it to you at a certain rate, similar like how they do have like first time home buyer programs. Mm. But before, when when HUD used to actually own a lot of homes, they would do that. And then the other one was the pure investor program. Mm. So if you came into it as a real estate investor, investor they had different programs for you and that's how they pre-qualified you. Okay, dope. So, all right, because the times that you mentioned another year yeah. that it wasn't so good and yeah. I know those years very well because I it happened to me too. Yeah. So we had a huge financial, uh, financial crisis, 07, 08, yep. and then what? 07, 08 came, I literally lost everything. Like I tell people, I was a millionaire by 25 and bankrupt by 27. 
Wow. So seven oh eight. Hell of a hell of a twenties. Yeah, I had a yeah, it was a fun two years. Like I was mm. I was living for those two years, but then everything went down. And right. so everything that I knew, it was gone, it was stripped away from me. And then that's how I transitioned into getting into government contracting. Mm -hmm. Was I needed to find a stable way to make income. Cause at the at the same rate, like my passion was still real estate. Right. So all I'm doing thinking in the back of my mind is how can I get back into real estate? Even though I just lost everything, mm -hmm. not even just fi from a financial standpoint, but like I, at relationships, like friendships, like even family, everybody wrote me off cause I was, I had involved so many people in my real estate stuff. Right. So, but then, you know, being the type of ego what, I had. But they were wanted. mad at you? Yeah, cause you know how it goes. Like you start getting money and mm -hmm. then everybody wants to get money with you. Right. So then you start putting people on, but the sad part about business is not everybody is a business person. Right. And that's a that's a uh, something I learned during that time is like, everybody's not meant to be in those types of roles. Mm -hmm. But me being a giver, I'm putting everybody on. Mm -hmm. Anybody in my phone, I'm putting them on, I'm putting them on. Right. So when 07, 08 came, all those people I put on now looking at me like, oh, you got me into this. Now I'm mm. now I'm messed up. Now my you know ain't that some shit, bro? Like, like that's how people <laughs> that's how people love ungrateful mother. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, listen, I literally got people that like I thought was my you know what I'm saying my right, people right. and completely turned it back on me. But it, yeah. I mean it's cool. So 0708 it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot financially. Mm. It taught me respect for money. Mm. It taught me um, everything I needed to know as it relates to money because then I changed my mind state with money. But then it also taught me a lot about people. Right. And that was a lesson that if I didn't go through that, I would have never learned that. Mm -hmm. I would have continued to be the same person I was. Right. And I would have been able, I would have continued to be taken advantage of and stuff like that. What is that lesson that you learned about, about people? That just that, not everybody is meant to be that. Like it sounds, I get ragged on anytime I say this type of stuff, but like you look at any other animal, mm -hmm. there's a hierarchy within it. Mm -hmm. Lions have a king. The mm -hmm. queen has a has a, has a place. That, you know, the lioness. Mm -hmm. You know, ants, bees, mm -hmm. everything. So as humans, it's the same way. Like, not everybody's supposed to be a boss. Mm -hmm. Like, there are there are workers, and there's nothing wrong with that. But everybody in those times, everybody was a boss. Everybody wanted to be on top. Right. And then when it all fell, that's how you could tell who was really bosses and who wasn't. Your true character shows in hard times. That's it. 100%. You know, when when the money's flowing, everything's smooth. That's easy. But it's about how, like that's part of being a boss, being a, the leader, the CEO, or whatever. People think it's so, it's all glamorous, but it's not, nah. you know? So, you know, you gotta manage a lot. You have to put out a lot of fires and you gotta put out fires that your people don't even know is burning. You know what I'm saying? Cause you don't want people panicking. That's what got me into kind of what I've been in for, the, for you know, ever since then is, is government contracting. So tell me about this government contracting because this is fascinating, man. We, we were having a conversation earlier. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So let's get into that. Our government doesn't produce anything. Let us start by asserting that the money the government holds is not its own. In general, the government does not produce anything, nor create wealth, nor even create jobs. If we are lucky, the government only reshuffles capital from place to place. Mm -hmm. So therefore, everything that they need and everything, every service that they provide us as citizens, they have to buy that, right? Mm -hmm. And so the simplest terms is you look at places like um, the, the communist governments, things like that, like China, they control a lot of things within their government. They produce things, they then give those things to their, to mm -hmm. their citizens. Right. Well, in America, we don't do that, mm -hmm. right? We have a free market capital, which is right. great. A free market is amazing. Yeah. But what people tend to um, not realize is that there's three forms of business. There's business to consumer, where you're selling hand to hand as a businessman, you're selling a product to the consumers. B to C. B to C, mm -hmm. there's B to B, where mm -hmm. you're doing business with other businesses. Right. But then the largest firm is B to G. Mm -hmm. Business to government. Business to government is the largest form of business. Um, and so essentially that's what I got into, was providing, I started off providing simple stuff like we talked about, paper towels, toilet paper, hand sanitizer. Right. Because I tell people all the time, like, anytime you go to Walmart, have you ever seen somebody from the army in there buying toilet paper? Does mm -hmm. that mean that they don't use toilet paper? Right. No, they just don't go to the stores like we do. Right. And so they utilize people like me. And mm -hmm. that's how I got my start was providing the government everything that they needed to essentially run the mm -hmm. government. Pe people don't even think about that, but one thing I've learned in business and meeting so many people is some of the most unglamorous things bring the most money. You know, 100%. so I met a guy in Utah. I mean, this dude had this mansion. It was crazy. They was making so much money, and they sold rocks. 
you know what I'm saying? Like these rocks for homes, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? For like like granite countertops and stuff yeah. like that. There's so many places in which we can like dig our heels in and make money, but you know, people, like what you said, not everybody's a boss or think like a boss mm -hmm. because you, what you did was a boss move, thinking like a boss. I'm gonna go into this sector where it's not overcrowded, right? It's not saturated and I'm gonna dig my heels in and make a lot of money right here. Most people think you gotta be on TV or an entertainer yeah, no. or an athlete or you know, or whatever to be a boss. But you know, it's so many things that people need, right? That you could provide that service. And that's the thing with the with government contracting. Mm -hmm. And as I got into it, I learned more. They need everything. The government needs everything. Right. So that's all I do is I made a living supplying them everything they needed. And it mm -hmm. started with small supplies and then I was able to transition into construction because that's where the, my background was with the real right. estate stuff, right. with doing rehabs. And then I started doing construction work and then I built my firm up and then um, I found other niches within that. Mm -hmm. And then I played, you know, the game. And that's the, that's the most important thing. And I think that's why people get scared of government contracting is they think it's so complicated, but it's because they don't understand how to play the game. Mm -hmm. Every game out here has rules. Mm -hmm. Once you learn the rules to the game, you can play it and you can play it to perfection. And that's what I did with government contracts. And I, I understood the rules of the game. Right, that's incredible. Yeah. Um, how you was brought to my attention, uh, we have a mutual friend, Chris, yep. um, solid dude. And he was telling me that, man, I got a friend that he teaches people how to get government contracts. I was like, what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> First of all, what are government contracts? Government contracts are agreements that outline business transactions between companies and government entities. Federal government agencies are required to publicly list their contract opportunity. Basically that you can take somebody from A to, a to Z yeah. and get them set up with their own business. Talk yeah. about that. Yeah, so I could take somebody literally from having no business at all, just having ambition. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I tell people is you don't have to come into this with a lot of money because like I said, I was essentially bankrupt when I started. Mm -hmm. I had nothing mm -hmm. and I built my way up Right. because the government has the programs and everything out there for you to be successful. Right. So what I did when uh, I created my course and of course, shout out to Chris Bruce because he, he's the one that kind of showed me that all this was a possibility and helped right. me create it. Um, but my course is laid out like that where somebody can come to me and they can literally start from nothing. We show them how to set up a business properly. Cause that's another thing that a lot of people don't do these days is they go and they get an LLC and they say, I'm a businessman. Mm -hmm. That don't mean you're a businessman. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you need to set your business up. You need to put together a business plan. You need to do market research. You need to understand your business inside and out before you actually go out there and start selling your business. Right. So those are the things I do is start there. And then once we got that foundation laid out, then we go into actually looking for the work, finding, finding the work that fits you. Um, utilizing any small or minority business classifications that you may have, whether you're a veteran, woman-owned, you know, mm -hmm. anything like that, we use those to your advantage to help you secure contracts. Mm -hmm. So it's really showing everybody the rules to the game. And the rules right. are out there because it's the government, so it's mm -hmm. public knowledge. Mm -hmm. All I want to do is just bring it out. Yeah, it's hard finding all of that and curating it all in one space, though. So I think what you provide is very valuable, you know? so. You so you currently help people find government contracts, correct? Yep. Yeah. So throughout my course, my course is basically that game plan, that A to Z, mm -hmm. how to find the work, how to bid the work, how to do the work, how to get paid, and then rinse and repeat. Um, how do they find it? I I want look my people. I love my my, my squad, people that follow me and yep. subscribe and tap into what I do, and I always want to share with them things and tools and tips to where they can level up as well. And a lot of people want to. So a lot of people are boss or have that yep. boss mentality, you know what I'm saying? Um, or want to supplement to their income, their current income, you know what I'm saying? So like when I meet somebody like you, I'm like, yo, you got to come on. I want my people to have access to what you provide. So, so basically, let me get this straight. Your course can take somebody who have some ambition, some push, some drive and teach them and help them through from A to Z on how to procure government contracts procure and government contract. start their own business like yep. that, right? And then we do that at every level. So the federal level, mm -hmm. the state level, and then the local level. Wow. So I teach it at every level. Um, mm -hmm. My website's thegovernmentcheese.org. Thegovernmentcheese.org. So, yeah, thegovernmentcheese.org. I want that right here on the screen. Yep. Thegovernmentcheese.org. The they uh, go to the website, get the course. If they want to contact with me, you know, my Instagram's Kev underscore J. And then... Um, the government cheese has, a, has its own Instagram as well. But yeah, that's what I'm trying to do is put it out there and then 
the next level from there, once people really get in the course and get moving, is to elect to get into a mentorship program. Mm -hmm. How much would, I know they want to know, but how much does somebody can somebody make uh, having that kind of business? It sounds crazy, but honestly, it's up to that person. So mm -hmm. I have individuals within my course that want to do, just like we talked about, supplemented income. Mm -hmm. So they don't want to go out and have, you know, create this large business. Mm -hmm. So you can do it where you can make on the, on the low end, you know, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars extra a month. Y'all hear that? So on the low end, anywhere from five to fifteen thousand extra a month. Yeah. That's the low end. On the on the low end, you okay. can do that, and that's just selling commodities. Right. That's doing little credit card purchases, mm -hmm. selling things like we talked about: hand sanitizer, toilet paper, copy paper is a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, copy uh, ink, toner mm -hmm. ink is a big one. It's so weird that people still use paper yeah and, you know what I mean the government uses a lot of it right yeah so you can do that on the low end or on the high end you can you can go all the way up and you can do hundreds of millions um there's a, a young brother I think 39 years old just signed the largest contract as a minority just last month mm -hmm. 13 billion dollars what is he what is he selling he's to in them? the IT space mm -hmm. and then another one the so you know how they talk about Kylie Jenner was the youngest self-made billionaire? Mm -hmm. Well, not anymore. The new youngest self-made billionaire is uh, a guy that does drones. He builds drones for the army. Mm -hmm. And he's now the world's youngest self-made billionaire and he does wow. government contracting. Wow. Yeah, so you can take it to that level and that extent, or you can just do it as a supplemental income. Mm -hmm. So it's that's there for anybody. That's incredible, man. How long have you been doing that? So I've been doing that since 2008. So oh, wow. 14 years now, going okay. on 15 years. That's incredible. Um, and it's, it's, I love it because I feel like it's an underutilized business model. It's an underutilized niche. Like there's so much opportunity. So it's not, it's not overly saturated. It's not overly saturated. And, and I think when people, when people hear government, that's they, get intimidated. Say, they get intimidated. They get intimidated, yeah. Yeah, and then, mm. but what I tell people is, don't get intimidated by it because it's the government. So everything about it is simple because mm -hmm. it has to be. It's the mm -hmm. government. Right. So the game plan is all laid out for you. Everything is there. For every question, there's an answer, mm -hmm. you know, because that's how the government rolls. So it's, it shouldn't be looked at as an intimidating thing or as a scary thing. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, they're looking for businesses because they have to spend 23% of every dollar. So 23 cents on every dollar that's spent has to be spent with small businesses of some classification. Mm. So they're looking for you to give you the money. Wow. They want to give you money. They want right. to put people in business. It's already pre-allocated. It's this. already allocated. Every wow. year when they go to Congress and they ask for funding, Congress is going to say, okay, we're going to give you, you know, the $5 trillion you want. But of that $5 trillion, we want 20% to go to small businesses. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to break it down from there. How much goes wow. to women? How much goes to veterans? All of that. Right. Yeah. So they, they put it out there. That's crazy, man. So why do you like, all right, so you're, you're clearly a successful person. You've had multiple wins in your life uh, professionally. Why go through the hassle of teaching other people or showing other people how to make money? Honestly, why is that important to you? For me, man, I, I turned 40 last year in October. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just, that something clicked in my mind. Like I had done so much for myself I felt like it was time for me to start doing for others and helping others. Mm, because okay. like I talked about to my detriment in the early 2000s, I was a giver and I put people in place in the real estate and all that. Right. That's just me, I'm just a giver, I wanna give back. Right. But this time around, I'm just giving my knowledge and just putting everything out there for individuals to digest it and really take it and run with it. And the difference I think with this, as opposed to like what I was doing when I started in real estate, when I started in real estate, I was just giving everybody handouts almost. And it's like they say, you, you can give a handout, but you got to give a hand up. So now it's more yeah. hand ups. Yeah, a handout is dangerous. It's very it's, dangerous. It's not helping anyone. No. I used to I used to be that guy just giving, giving, giving. And to an extent, I, I'm a giver like you by nature. But, you know, at a certain point, you got to be like, all right. And I've had these conversations with people that I know that has come to me for assistance. And I'm like, all right, you really want help? <laughs> you really want my help? All right, let's 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 get a pen and paper out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I started asking all these questions. Let's identify how we got to this point. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And some people don't want that help. They want the handout. They want the handout. You know? yeah. And that's when you guys say, like, look, that's not helping you. It's actually, I'm sorry for giving you handouts before. You're actually hurting them. Because I made, I made you weak. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because, listen, y'all, when, when somebody asks for something, right? Listen, everybody get into a bind. It happens. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you need a little help. But when it's 
habitual, yeah. when it's perpetual, we gotta be like, you gotta stop because you handed somebody some cash or whatever, they don't have any sense of urgency to not be in that situation again, right? So the older they get, the long, you know, they get more stuck in those ways. Yeah. And it's very damaging. It's very hurtful to just be giving your, your people that you love, just giving them when they ask, right? When they haven't earned it or it's not a really legitimate reason why they're in that situation. We gotta identify why and then help coach them out of it. That's real help. You know what's crazy is like, that's a lot, and as you said, and I'm just thinking, that's a big issue with a lot of people with entrepreneurship and business today. Mm -hmm. Like there's been so much stuff that's come across in the past couple of years where it seemed like people were just giving people the game plan for success. Yeah. And but they weren't really helping them. Mm. And then you had all these people failing, and now you have people that think, oh man, you can't do this because that's a bad business. Right. It's like it's not a bad business, it's but you were just giving it, yeah. so you didn't respect it. Yeah. And that and that's that's kind of what I tried to do when I created my my stuff was give proper information and like show people the way, but not like just say here here's this. I'm gonna go get a contract and just give it to you. Because mm. then what? When that contract's done, what you gonna do? Mm. You don't know how to go get another one. Now you coming back they to have me. To come back to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what I didn't want. And that's what I appreciate Chris for helping me put together is something that's not where I'm just giving stuff. It's, right. a, it's actual knowledge that people can digest and use. That's dope. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, man. So you have, so are you still doing the government contracts? I still do. I still okay. run um, run my business. Right. So I have an underground utility company and we specialize mm -hmm. in water and sewer infrastructure rehab. Mm -hmm. So with that, I specialize in Basically, like I tell people, I'm the city's plumber. So like if your toilet clogs up at your house, you call a regular plumber. Mm -hmm. But when the city systems have issues, they call me. Mm -hmm. So right now, I don't operate so much at the federal level anymore. Mm -hmm. I operate more at the state and local level. Right. Be just because of the niche that I got into. And I mean, the story of how I got into that niche is even crazier. Like I had met some people that I did the age old thing when you're a general contractor, you never let somebody use your license. Mm -hmm. I let somebody use my license. Their business went under. My license was attached to it. They happen to do underground utility construction. I get with my lawyer. I'm like, hey, get me out of this mess. He starts getting me out of it. Then I'm like, cool, shut the business down. I'm going back to what he says. No, you, you can't. I'm like, why? He was like, the, the Miami is about to get $13 billion in funding to repair their water and sewer system. Mm. There's only 10 certified small and minority businesses, and you're one. Wow. So he says, keep the business going and learn it, and you'll make $100 million in the next 10 years just by picking up your phone. Wow. And then, and that was the play I did on that and just took off. And that's how I got into that business. How long has it been now? I've been in the underground utility uh, industry since 2016. Okay, so are you getting to that 100 million? Oh yeah, I've been to that. What, <laughs> damn, that's crazy. So you made 100, 100 million? I've, I've, in my career, Mm. From 2008 up until now, I've generated over $100 million in revenue. Easily. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So you mansion? Nah. Bugatti? I, I, listen, man. I, no. Helicopter? Nah, none of that. Spaceship? Nah. <laughs> you know one thing um, I learned and I think 2008 taught me mm. is I respect money so much more now and I don't put all of my all into the dollar. Like I just get up and love to do it. Mm. And my, and, you know, is my family straight? Yeah, my family's decent, you know what mm. I'm saying? But I, I don't put all my, my faith into the dollar. And I've actually given back more than I've held on to. When you say you don't put all your faith into the dollar, what do you mean by that? So one of the lessons that I personally learned mm -hmm. through that time, cause that was, man, I tell you, that was a tough time for me. Not just financially, but like I said, mentally. Right. And. Um, I did a lot of soul searching, a lot of just trying to figure out who I was as an individual. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I was putting too much faith in money. So I was just running around chasing the money, chasing the money, chasing the money, and I was missing everything else. So it was like the world was going on around me, but because all I was worried about was a dollar. Right. So I stopped putting my faith and, and then like so much value on the dollar. Mm -hmm. And I put it more in like my experiences, my interactions with individuals. Right. And then I found that in doing so, more money finds its way to me mm -hmm. because my focus and everything that I'm doing is not just for money. Mm -hmm. And then of course, you know, you had a hater say, oh, you say that cause you got money. Uh. It's like, nah, even when I didn't have money, 
like I had to change my mental mind state mm -hmm. and my perception to money. Mm -hmm. And then the money found its way to me. I got you. I don't know. I think I agree with you. Uh -huh. Maybe I have a little difference of perception for cool. myself, but I put a lot on money, uh -huh. right? Um, or the outcome of money, what money can do, and that's what I can do it's with what the money. money can do for you. Yeah. Right. So, and my biggest thing is like, look, I got a lot of responsibilities as far as my children, my family, stuff like that. And, you know, I want to do anything I can to secure their, their, their comfort and, and the things that they need. Mm -hmm. Right. And I never want to be able to, I never want to have to say no, mm -hmm. you know? So unless they don't deserve, that's you know what I mean? Different, you like we talked about. Yep. Yeah. So. So, you know, with that, I'm like, yeah, let's get, let's get the bag, you yeah. know? Now, I, I am a conscious capitalist. Let's get that clear, As right? As the spending population shifts more into millennial and Gen Z territory, corporations have suddenly found themselves faced with buyers who don't just want a good product, but one that's ethically and sustainably sourced. It's not enough that a car has a nice interior anymore. It has to offer leather alternative seats or some other comfortable material that doesn't require the exploitation of animals. Take Tesla or Audi, for example. Tesla now offers vegan-friendly interiors on their line of cars, and the upcoming Audi e-tron will have seats upholstered entirely from recycled fishing nets. The source of the material, or food, or labor all has to meet the more ethical standard of these younger buyers. Please the things that I happen to do for money are in service for people, is good for people, you yeah. know? So, you know, that's always there, and how I deliver, how I, whatever product or service that I provide, I want it to be excellent. I want to be the best at it. So we were talking earlier, sometimes I feel like I get in my own way because I get in my own head trying to make something perfect for mm -hmm. people. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And because I know me personally, I have very high expectations. I'm very hard to please with a lot, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm just assuming that people that, that are in my ecosystem are the same, you know? So, you know, I spend a lot of time before I execute on certain things, you know? Um, but sometimes I don't, because sometimes I feel it, I got it, it's right here, and I just run with it, you know what I mean? But there are times that I take a long time, I'm thinking, 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 tweaking, trying this, to A, B, test, and that, mm -hmm. you know? But I ultimately want to do, I want people to be satisfied with what I provide. That, what you just said, like, that's that goes, that's exactly what I was saying. See, like, you're looking at the money at how you can provide the service and how mm -hmm. you can do for so many people. And but then, also, let's, let's get it clear. Uh -huh. I want the nice things. You want the air. Listen, we I've all been do. I've been having nice things all my life. We all do, and I would like to continue that. We all you know do. what I mean. And I want to uh, provide dope experiences for people I love, and I want them to enjoy the nice things too, and for my children to have a standard. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like my daughters, they they see what a, a, a man does, work hard to provide for the family. You know what I'm saying? So. They're not gonna be walking in no door with no boy or no with my no wife guy that, that all the time about me with my daughter. She's yeah. like, she's like, it's gonna be hard for her because you Perfect. set the standard for her so Perfect. high. And it's like, yeah, because that's how it should be. Right. You know what's crazy? I got friends, like friends, homegirls of mine that was friends. One of them in particular, she was like, ah, me or nothing romantic. This yeah. is my dog. But you know, she's around me and she her father was a, a legit dude too, or is, and she's like, you know. I compare everybody to you, Mike. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so they gotta be legit. I like, I respect that, thank you. But that's how it has to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, whoever my daughter is in interested in, they better be better than me, mm -hmm. or at least on, on par, on you know par, what I'm saying? Man. Nah, yeah. I'm the same way. Like I said, my wife, she get on me all the time. She be like, why you doing it? Why you getting it? Why you treating her like this? It's gonna be hard. I'm like, nah, Good. it should be hard. Right. It should be hard. She should go into any situation with like, nah, this is where you gotta, this is where you gotta be at. Yeah. Like make that man be a man because there's mm. so many men out here that don't know how to be men males right yeah exactly yeah. you feel me yeah like they don't understand what it mm. really is what it, so we what gotta show ours what 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 kind of void do you see in the culture with masculinity or is there now there's I, there's definitely a void mm. there's a big void you know i have so many theories that i struggle with in my head about why that void is there mm. but i think there's a large void in masculinity and it's it's sad, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because we're not showing the next generation anything. Mm -hmm. And then there's, it's just, man, they can, we can go on for hours, but there's such a big void there. And I even look at it and try to think, well, is it cultural? Is it this? But when right now it's across the board. It's, it's affect everybody. 
Like there's right. a large void. Though. Why do you? Well, why do you think there is a void? I think that people are scared of masculinity. I think that masculinity is disappearing. I think that it's a concerted effort to emasculate men. Um, I think that some people feel threatened by masculinity and, and the, uh, the typical way that men carry themselves, um, leading families and different things like that. So I think that there's an effort to mitigate uh, strong men in America. There's a few different ways to think about masculinity, but just looking at kind of the definition of the term 50 years ago, and you had you know, people like John Wayne, you had Martin Luther King, you had Sean Connery, you know, you think of like masculine features as in the beards, hairy chest, big muscles, being stoic, being brave, being rugged, being a provider. Today you have, you know, people like Harry Styles and, and Timothy Chalamet. You have people that are completely contrary to what we were looking at back then. And those values and of those masculine characteristics are, are completely devalued. I think there's a fear of that. And within that fear, now it's become hate also. Mm -hmm. So then you have some people that now they're scared to express their masculinity because they're scared of the hate or the, or the ridicule they may receive from it. Right. So people are starting to suppress that mm -hmm. because they don't know how they're going to be perceived if they if they right. be that type of way. You know how I, I feel you, but you know how I view all of that? Uh, if my manhood and masculinity offends you, I want you to be offended. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want to be around people who have a problem with a man being a man, yeah. right? Now, I'm not going to be a jerk or an asshole but I'm always assertive, right? And I'm honest and direct, right? Some people have a problem with that. It's not my problem, mm -hmm. you know? If the, tr the truth hurts sometimes, you know? And sometimes coming from certain people, it really stings, but it is what it is. It's necessary. It's necessary. Because if not, you live in a lie. It's, it's very, it's a, it's a very, uh, how can I say this? Like charitable thing. Like I feel like the most charitable thing is to be very direct and honest with people not to beat around the bush and bullshit them and string them along that's not cool there's so much sensitivity out there bro it's like like you should be able i should be able to call you and be like hey bro check this out and and it not be looked at oh man kev calling me screaming on me it's like no yes, you should bro. be able to be able to do that as men like that's what it's about like yeah. we kings we warriors like we should be able to talk to another king and it not be looked at like oh you can't say this you can't do that or you can't talk to somebody else in a certain type of way. Like, what? That To me, that's just crazy. Yeah, man, like, what people I, I care about, like, look, if you out of line, I should be able to tell you. And I should respect it. And just like, if I'm out of line, please, I'm I'm begging, I always say this, yo, check me if I'm, I'm off, if I'm wrong. Because if you don't, that's kind of fucked up. You letting me out here. I'm sitting here watching you, you do some craziness. You, you letting me self-destruct, yep. like, don't do that. So I won't do that with nobody I care about. I'm gonna tell them straight up. But of course, I'm gonna deliver the message with love, right? It ain't gonna be like, oh, you a lame, you did, 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 But if they did some lame shit, I'm like, bro, that shit was whack, bro. The nah, fuck? Cause sometimes Ooh. people get lost in their own head. They get lost in the sauce and it takes that. Mm -hmm. And like you say, like, I would want you to check me if you see me doing something crazy. Because you might get lost in the moment. You just moving around, you not realizing it. But nowadays it's like people scared to do that. Like you can't you can't check nobody. You can't say nothing. You offend somebody if you say this. You like that's crazy to me. Listen, I get offended by somebody being offended by me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm offended that you offended. But nah, but real shit though, like there's I'm not I'm never one of those people that, that jump on any kind of bandwagon, right? The common notions and narratives, I just ignore them, right? Mm -hmm. I do my own, I live in my own world and I observe things purely from my own eyes, right? So other people do not season my reality or my perception, right? Reality is reality and I deal with it as that. Now in our society, in our country, I noticed something. We are pretty much the only free nation on the mm -hmm. planet, right? And I noticed that during COVID when places that I like, like Australia, UK, like English speaking foreign countries, when I noticed that they was on real martial law yeah. during COVID, right? And I'm like, yo, these people don't got, they don't have guns? I didn't, I, I didn't even put that in my head. Mm -hmm. I would just think that everybody got guns, right? But I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Yo, we're really free here, right? Now, I do see the government trying to certain factions of the government trying to impede on that freedom, right? With these gun laws that they're, they're doing, right? First of all, 
it was very egregious to outlaw drugs back when they did and have that war on drugs. Mm -hmm. What that did was create a whole new industry, a, a military industrial complex, right? And it put a lot of people that look like us behind bars unjustly, right? Mm -hmm. For crazy amounts of time, right? But that keeps the machine going, the economic machine, right? That's a big hustle. By the way, it's a government contract. Right. <laughs> and it's in the private sector as well too now, Correct. jails and corrections, which it should, should not be, right? Nope. Or maybe it should, I don't know, that's a whole nother that's debate. Yep. But nonetheless, all of these little, let's say a person when marijuana got legalized and now you have psychedelics becoming legal, let's say it's very important for people to push forward for legalization of these things. And I'm gonna tell you why. Even if you don't do drugs, even if you don't care about it, right? Because if you allow them to outlaw this, what's next? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nobody should be able to tell you, hey, you can't put that in your body. No, you don't tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. When the number one thing that kills people is food. Food is the biggest epidemic in this country. You know what I'm saying? And this is a fact, right? So there's no restrictions on how much you can eat, mm -hmm. right? There should be no restrictions on drugs, right? Also guns. Don't tell me what kind of gun my kids can, can have. Oh, you can have a handgun, but only this many rounds, but not an AR-15. It's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Don't tell me what kind of guns we can use. The fact that, well, people gotta understand, the fact that we've never been, like, even though we complained like a motherfucker during COVID, right? A little inconveniencing wearing masks here and there. We've never been on martial law. That, it ain't gonna fly. Why? Because everybody got guns. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's a real thing, is to prevent government tyranny. You know what I mean? Australia was on martial law, bro. I got yeah. so many friends out there, they couldn't leave the house. Or after a certain amount of, after a certain time of day, they gotta be in the house. You know what I'm saying? Crazy shit, right? So we, we're very fortunate here, but I see, I see the powers that be creeping up on our, our freedom, right? With all of this stuff about guns right right now. Go ahead. Well, so what you think about what Mark Cuban's doing with the, with the, uh, the pharmaceutical stuff? What's he doing? I'm not familiar. So he created a, a company to basically attack big pharma. Mm -hmm. So he's providing the same drugs that they provide, but at cost. In January, billionaire investor Mark Cuban launched a low cost online drug company. The goal is to f up the pharmacy industry. I'm sorry for my language, right? Our business model is very, very simple. Our goal first drives everything is to be the low cost provider um, for medications to patients. The company sells over 200 generic drugs in partnership with a digital pharmacy. Prescription drug prices remain out of reach for many Americans who pay among the highest prices in the world. So more private market players are stepping in. This leukemia medication goes for about $2,000 at many pharmacies. Cuban's company sells it for as low as $17.10. Patients want the medication they need at the lowest possible price, period, end of story. That's not what these vertically integrated companies are providing. They may say so, but that's not what's happening. So instead of like, if it's a cancer saving drug and, and you know, the drug only costs wholesale $30 a pill, mm -hmm. Big Pharma would sell it for $1,500, $2,000. Yeah, yeah. He's selling it at $30 with a 10% markup. How do you mm -hmm. think that's gonna be perceived? I like it. I like it, especially for things that are necessary for like people living and dying. Um, I, I think it's beautiful. I think love it. Disrupt the whole pharmaceutical industry if more people start to do it because then they'll realize, all right, like we talked about earlier, like with the, the with the psychedelics or anything like that. That hey, I can just get this drug and really help me in so many different ways. Right. I don't have to go to this big system and get these and get put on these treatments. Yeah, they're gonna have to ride with it. I'm gonna tell you why because information travels at the speed of thought nowadays, right? 20 years ago, it wasn't like that. 50 years ago, forget about it, right? People are in the know now more. Some people are still kind of got the, the veil over their eyes, but more and more people are waking up and becoming more conscious to a lot of things, especially like that. I'm glad you brought that up so my people could hear it. That's my first time hearing about no, no, that. You got to look into that. He just yeah. created a company, Mark Cuban did, and basically he's going at That's great. the pharmaceutical It's company. great. It's great. So I do think it's egregious, but here's the thing, though. It's a caveat to that, right? Because I'm a person who don't have health insurance, right? right? So I pay out of pocket. So I and I had a health insurance, right? So I see what I've seen what my uh, what the healthcare provider charges my insurance company versus what they charge me for the same thing, and it's completely different. 
they're marking it up the providers this is what see everybody put the the everybody put a lot of uh hate or direct a lot of negative energy towards big pharma but they don't know what doctors do and hospitals do How, they're Play the ones the marking it all the way up why are you running up the bag right now for mm -hmm. for that corporation and not me you know what i'm saying of course i don't want them running it for me but it's 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 a cycle it's a lot of different uh salacious players in this game you know what i'm saying and it's not just big pharma you know what i mean mm -hmm. these doctors these hospitals they're 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 naughty too they're Everybody's very naughty in on it. yeah but we ain't you know what i'm saying and that's that's the problem yeah and that goes back to like why i created my course and what i was trying to do mm -hmm. was you, i mean you look at the major players within government contracting you look at mm -hmm. the people who are making billions of dollars every year and then you look at the regular mom and pop that can do the same thing they don't even get the same opportunities they don't even know that these opportunities ex exist right and that's the knowledge and game that i wanted to bring It's like nah you can do the same thing you can get these same opportunities yeah you can't do things to the same capacity as them but you can provide a similar service and you but can eat. You might can at some point. At some point. Listen, I, I remember in high school, I remember looking around and observing how the recruiters that came to school was like trade schools, like AIBT, like yep. mechanic work, you know what I'm saying? Not universities, right? Yep. I'm like, this is interesting. In high school, I remember thinking about like, yeah, yeah, technically we all have, ac we all have access to the same uh, uh, outcomes, but if people don't know that we have access to it, we don't have access to it, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I'm glad that I run into people like yourself who, you know, let's let the people know that this exists. Hey, you can you can potentially quit your job and make 100,000 a month, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or whatever, like these are, because like you said, saying, hey, I work in government contracts, that automatically people brains gonna shut down. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I gotta be in the military. I gotta have this education, yada, yada, yada. And that's not the case, right? So it makes a lot of sense. There's a lot out there that exists that people don't know they have access to. But this is what I love about America. And this is what people, Americans gotta really wake up to. Whatever good there there is in this country that exists, everybody has access to it. Yeah. It's about having knowledge of that access and taking the steps to uh, obtain it, create it, cultivate it, and et cetera. So we all have the access. It's here for everybody. It's about letting people know, right? And that's what it is. Like I tell people that come to me, they're like, oh, why would I pay you to do this? Isn't the information free? I'm like, yeah, it's all free. I'm gonna tell you where all of the free information is. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Like, that, like you just said, the information is there for everybody. It's just the access to it. Some people know that it's there and how to access it and some groups don't. Right. And that's what I want to do is level the playing field so right. everyone has access to the information that's there for you so we all have the same opportunities to mm -hmm. grow. Right. I'm not with anybody infringing on my rights, for mm -hmm. one, my freedom, for two, telling me what to do, for three. I'm not with none of that shit, you know what I'm saying? Come take my gun from me, you know what I'm saying? Um, Tell me I can't take this substance that makes me happy, that puts me in a better mood. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel me? Like we're adults, you know? Just like with that little uh, epidemic we just allegedly had in 2020, the virus, mm -hmm. it's like telling me to cover my face. Why don't I do that for everything, every day, for the flu, for this, for that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, people need to relax, you know? And it's all about money because it's not about health. If it was about health, they would be telling people to get outside, get some fresh, some some sunlight, some vitamin D, right? It would be telling people, yo, get off your devices late at night. You know what I'm saying? Try to reset your circadian rhythm. It'll be telling people that, yo, the people that's really dying outside of old or pre-existing issues are overweight. You know what I'm saying? Let's lose weight, America. They would be saying that nutrition and health would be the 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 forefront. Would be, it's never said. They're saying stay away from each other social distance people with robust immune systems are around germs all the time that's how they build a strong immune system you know what i'm saying so like let's be honest it's about money you know what i'm saying you know who the number two government contractor was the past two years in a row who's that pfizer they're actually number two and number three because they have a uh they have two companies 
Mm. So they took up the number two and number three spot for the last two years. For medication and what no, else? No, no, no. For, I'm talking about overall government contract. Mm. But it's primarily most of the stuff that they've been doing related mm. to that. So it plays off what you're saying. It's 100% about money. Yeah, it, it's money. It's money. People, people, you beautiful people out there. You're getting mad at your neighbors. You're getting mad at so-and-so and this and that and the third. They're keeping everybody mad just so they can keep making more money, right? None of this is about our health. They do not, if you really think <laughs> any, Gavin Newsom or any, wherever you live at, you think any of these people care about your health, you're sadly mistaken. Because first of all, when they were pushing all this mask stuff, right? They wasn't wearing masks, you know what I'm saying? They would, they would get caught all the time, right? And then, you know, once again, nobody was preaching health. It's so bizarre to me. Nobody's preaching health. You know how many people got COVID and coughed it off? Me, mm -hmm. it was not a big deal, you know what I'm saying? Of course, that's not for everybody, but I'm healthy. I have a robust immune system. I, I, I'm in a caloric deficit uh, often. I work out a lot, right? So these things don't affect me the same as it will affect somebody that is sedentary and that's overweight, you know what I mean? So why is that not talked about? You know what I'm saying? And not just me, everybody I know <laughs> coughed it off. It wasn't that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if they put that out there, it'll, it'll, it'll slow a lot of dollars down. If they, if they and that's what, see, like that. that's fine. It's a game and they trying to make their money. It's cool. But I want us, the people, Americans, to, to be aware of that and not fall into that game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Treating people, treating each other like shit because these assholes is, is manipulating everybody, tugging at your emotions and your heartstrings to make more money because the most effective way of marketing is tugging at your emotions. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They know that. They doing it. That's the game. They running up the bag. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the game. That's yeah. what they do. But back, we were talking about like how, you know, masculinity is not, is frowned upon in today's society. It's so bizarre. I'm of the mind state, man, when, I'm of the mind state of, yo, men need to be men. You know what I'm saying? Like society is safer when we're all men, you know what I mean? First of all, when men are fully activated in their masculinity, they're not walking around like tough guys, mm -hmm. you know? Insecure men walk around like tough guys. And insecure men look at confident men as they're trying to be tough, you know what I'm saying? Men that's fully activated in their manhood and their masculinity, they chill. You're calm, you're relaxed. There's no need to be tough. There's no need to be tough. You don't wanna be tough. Like, I don't ever wanna fight. I don't want that kind of uh, conflict. You know what I'm saying? But if it has to happen, we go there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that's always a last resort, you know? And this is what I teach my son. And this is how things should be, you know? You have situations where a, a cop might just blast somebody out, out the gate, just nervous, scared. That should never happen. These things should never happen. If our society, if the if if masculinity was okay, right? Can we be masculine? If that was okay in our in our society, you would have, you know, lo the 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 nature of law enforcement would be chill, would be de-escalating things. It wouldn't be like, hey, da -da 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 in a panic. Yeah. That is the worst thing. That 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 panic energy, that is so bad. You know That's what I'm saying? When bad stuff happens. That's when all the bad stuff happens. It doesn't happen when people are calm and calculated, mm -hmm. lowering their heart their heart rate, able to, to analyze everything, yep. you know what I'm saying, practically. And if they gotta blast somebody, boom, take that one out, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But when you have this yelling instructions, like, bro, I don't know what you're saying. I'm nervous, and I'm more nervous that you're nervous, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I got pulled over one time, bro, and from my tents and we was in the middle of the desert and I seen his hand shaking, that made me very nervous. You know what I'm saying? Cause he was scared and that you don't want that. Uh -uh. So I'm like, hey, sorry, man. You know, I, I tried to talk to him and make him calm him down and my hands are right here, all of that stuff. I never seen a cop use a, I didn't even know they had these. It's a machine or some kind of device that measures your tent. Oh yeah. yeah I'm yeah, like, yeah. you must be brand new. That came with the, the new cop starter <laughs> kit. You know what I'm saying? I never seen that before. Yeah, that's but that, that's scary, man. People in that heightened, when you are in a fight or flight state, right? We were talking about this a little bit earlier. Yeah. You know, there's potential for great genius. And let me explain. 
So <clears throat> human beings are, are, are incredible, right? If you get cut, your body will just fix itself. It just, the skin just closed back up. If you break a bone, that bone will fuse back together stronger. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It wants our body it, with hormones and everything. We, we fall into a place of homeostasis. Our body wants to be healthy, right? And when we're in a heightened state of whatever, fear, panic, happiness, whatever, right? Uh, especially fear, like a, a potential uh, threat to our, our bodies. You know, you feel that energy in your stomach, that, yeah. that nerve, the nerves, that nervousness, right? And some people will articulate it as fear, will m let it manifest as fear, and that's not good, you know what I mean? Because that's when intellect shuts off, right? That's when cowardice comes out, right? And cowardice is doing bad things to people too. It's hurting somebody unjustly, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Out of fear, you know, fear is, is a liar. Fear robs us, robs us of humanity and our natural state of being. You know, when you're in that fight or flight, right? We're manipulating our hormones and our hormonal outputs at that moment, right? Our fucking, our, our, our vein, our, veins and, and arteries start restricting, you know what I'm saying? Our pupils dilate. Yep. So many things happen to prepare to fight or to run, right? So when people like, I, I believe in a society where everyone trains, everyone does something physically demanding, you know what I'm saying? Everyone uh, uh, volunteers to do stressful things and on the regular yeah. because you learn how to manage stress, right? You learn how to, when instead of that you start figuring out how to That's slow it down it makes you strong and it makes you it allows you to adapt to stress yep. right and manage stress right and have a level head when everybody else is high you know what i'm saying and when you have a level head and if, if it's like a situation where people are panicking they're going to watch they're going to pay attention to the most level calm person you know yep. what i'm saying okay he's not panicking like what should we do that goes back to like that leadership and that being that boss that we talked about. Correct. Those are, those are some of the traits that are necessary to be a true leader and a true boss. Correct. Is when things are all hectic, you've been able to control yourself and control everything that's going on around you. Mm -hmm. Because then others will look to you for that advice. Like, okay, all right, cool. He's calm. All right, we're going to be straight. And so that's very powerful to be able to do that, mm -hmm. to be able to have that type of control over your body yeah, and, and your mind. Yeah, and we practice doing things like that in – understanding those mechanisms because there's a lot of mechanisms in the body that happens in those situations and when we understand it we can control it mm -hmm. we can consciously manipulate these things right and that's where flow state comes in you know flow is often described as a state of kind of effortless effort we feel like we're propelled through the activity everything else just seems to disappear time is going to dilate which is a fancy way of saying it's going to pass strangely five hours go by in like five minutes occasionally it'll slow down you get a freeze frame effect i mean anybody who's been in a car crash for example intuition tends to get turned up a lot this is a basketball player in the zone seeing the hoop and suddenly it's as big as a hula hoop and our frown muscles tend to be paralyzed. And what that frowning is, is a sign that the brain is doing work. This is, uh, this is a constant issue in my marriage where my wife thinks I'm mad at her or somebody. And I'm like, no, no, I'm just thinking. This is just me thinking. I'm in robot mode. Um, you know, when people are in those heightened states of whatever, that big energy, and they're able to, they recognize it, and they're able to calm everything down and go, you know? I, I, I experience it all the time, you know, and me reading more about it, understanding it more, putting two and two together, putting the pieces together, it's like, wow, this is great, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm on a new embarkment in life myself, personally. I, I, I've i learned so much, even in this past week, about what I'm able to do and what we're all able to do, you know? And, um, you know, it, it's just fascinating. And that's why people that tap in, I want to share these things with them. You yep. know what I'm saying? Of course, I'm practicing it. I'm using, putting it in an application, but I want to share them, share it with them. And even like what you got, what you're doing, what you're providing, like you've been making a ton of money doing this, right? So let's share that with people. Let's level, help people level up. You know yeah, what that's I mean? what it's about. It's about sharing it and, and helping others. Because mm -hmm. if you can help one person just be a little bit better, you've done a good job. Right. Like 
we can continuously always work on ourselves and make ourselves better. We can make more money. We can grow. We can do all those things. But I read one time, like, you know, your true legacy is, is what's left once you're gone. Mm-hmm. So if, if we spend so much time only focusing on ourselves and being and never giving back and trying to help others, we're going to get to a great place. But then what? But the knowledge well, in the we? game that you're giving people, like mm-hmm. you just say, when you share those types of things, people will be like, oh, Mike taught me this, that mm-hmm. I'm using this in my daily, and then they attribute it to that, and then maybe they can teach somebody who knows, and now you've impacted an entire group of people that you right. may not even know. Right. But you, you've you had such a great impact on their life that, that you don't even know that they're accrediting you for their success, mm-hmm. and then that that's being put out in the universe is coming back to you in more positivity. And that's what I'm trying to do. Like you say, I'm trying to put that out there and affect others. And it's going to always come back. You, you put it bro, out there. You're doing it, bro. There is certain universal laws that we cannot escape, right? And karma is one of them, you know? And, you know, some pe- people focus a lot on the karmic debt, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm all about that karmic credit, the good stuff that's coming. You know what I'm saying? And what you're doing, a lot of good karma is coming back to you. You know what I'm saying? Cause you putting people on in a real practical way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? To change their lives, Appreciate help their that. families out. Yeah. So that's coming back to you. You know what I mean? And that's, you know, I'm sure you're 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 living in it and experiencing it now, but it's gonna keep happening. The more you do, the more it comes back to you. And I'm sure that's not why you do it, but it's cool knowing that it is still coming. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And it'll just keep coming. Yeah. As long as you keep doing what you're doing. Now I love when like Every week, this week was a great week for a lot of my students. They were mm-hmm. really seeing a lot of success. Right. And, that, and that felt good to me mm-hmm. because to see the enjoyment and to talk to them on the phone and to get the emails from them and, and just their pure enjoyment about, about how much their life has just changed just in meeting me and me showing them certain things. And, it ain't, and a lot of that is not even really tied to a monetary gain, but it's emotionally you know, and mentally helping these people level up and helping them grow and them getting to a new place and them accomplishing things mm-hmm. that they thought they would never be able to accomplish. Right. Similar like what you do on, on the fitness side. Mm-hmm. When you help someone accomplish a goal that they, for themselves that they never thought was possible, they're so much more grateful because like, man, I didn't even think I could do this. Right. And that's what I'm trying to do on, on the business side with the government contracting is like showing people, now nah, you can do this. I know you can do it. I might believe in you more than you believe in you. Mm-hmm. But then when they hit that success, then it's like, shh, they feel like they're ready to go. Yeah, man, and it's interesting, man, like, when you take that on, when you take on these undertakings of like helping people do things, bro, I take it all the way on, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. right now, like, I don't work with people one-on-one in the gym like that anymore. Once in the blue, somebody come through, I hear their story or whatever, and I, wanna, and I wanna help them, and I tap in with them. But right now, it's my son, you know? And he's 16, he'll be 17 uh, later this year. Um, you know, high school, we in the summer. And it's very important to me to help him put on some more size, get his strength up and everything. And bro, I be having some, he, he go to the gym by himself. He got his membership, he drive, but I be wanting to be there to make sure he doing it right. You know what I'm saying? I be tired, bro, after work. <laughs> but I'm like, let's go. You yeah. ready? I'm picking you up right now. Or meet me, meet me at the office. We're going to the gym. Because that feeling you get when you see it in him is so much. And I, bro, I it's an addiction for yeah. me seeing like the weights. Oh, he's stronger now. Dang. Oh, he okay, cool. Yeah. I because I know I know this game so well, right? I know how to help people build their bodies, which in turn is building their minds. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I love seeing that the actual tangible numbers changing and dialing up, you know what I'm saying? Uh, seeing his veins, when he, you know what I'm saying? Like seeing his shoulders start becoming more round, like him sculpting his body in yeah. turn, which is sculpting his mind. I love seeing that because, you know, it's, it's like if, if you, you was in my city or in a city I used to live in, like, yo, Mike, what's a good spot to eat? And I recommend it to you and you go and you love it and you tell me, I get satisfaction out of that. So this is an, in an even deeper form because you're helping people, you're helping set people's foundation. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Whether, whether it be their physical, well being, mental, spiritual, financial, these are building blocks for one's I was just foundation. About to say, it's, it's building blocks and they all tie together. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, what I've found um, is people are just missing one little piece and one thing and it's, it's stifling the growth of everything. Mm-hmm. So when you can provide them that little bit that helps them grow that one area, 
Right. Then it just compounds, and you see their entire life level up. Yeah. And that's that's what's amazing to yeah, see man. that growth. And it's all connected. It's all connected. Mind, body, spirit, finance, relation. You mentioned relationships earlier. Yeah. Like I'm big on that, man. Like deep, meaningful relationships with people. It's all connected. You know, we separate things, but we shouldn't, because we're all we're just one being we're ourselves. One. Yep. You know, my brain and my mind is in my body. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The same place where my muscles at. There's yeah. no separation. It's all the same. And this vessel that I have is, is a, a vessel for my spirit, my soul, whatever, my personality, whatever that is, right? And I can use this for a lot of good in the world. You know, we were talking about earlier, our words affect people, yeah. you know? I could walk in the room and say like, yo, you look great today. You look really good, man. You smiling, you glowing, your energy is, is right. That's gonna help you vibrate higher. Mm -hmm. Or one can use their words to tear people down, which is not a good thing. Should never do that. But we're all so powerful. We all have so much um, power that we wield without even thinking about what we're wielding. That's what we gotta do. Like that, to me, like that's the mission. Mm -hmm. Like for me is to let people know that they have that power. Right. Because we live in a world and a society where, like we were talking about, and it plays off the masculinity thing where it's almost like your power and everything that's within you is being suppressed. And people have become like cool with it being suppressed. It's like, no, you have this power. You are a great being. Mm -hmm. Tap into that. Right. Be the best version of you that you can be. Like, you can be that. Like, right. I got a saying that me and my homeboys, we joke, but like I always say, winners win. Mm -hmm. And then people think I'm talking like on a financial side, but no, I'm talking like, like be a winner, like win. Mm -hmm. Like realize that you can be more than what you think you can be. Like mm -hmm. tap into all of that. Like you say, your spiritual, your mental, your financial. Tap into it and win. You can win. It's there for you too. That's real, man. And in in terms of like we're speaking on masculinity, it's masculine. It's a it's a high masculine trait for a man to be a gentleman. You feel me? It's a high masculine trait for a man to be gentle. Yeah, you right. know what, one thing, I'll cut you off, but you know one thing that kills me? And I don't know, it's, it's just, you ever been to the gas station? You see a guy and a girl right there, and the guy sitting in the car while the girl pumping gas? Mm -hmm. Bro, I would literally go over there and tell her, go back in the car and pump the gas, and, and look at that dude like, my man, what yeah. are you doing? I won't even look at him, I'll just pump the gas I, for You feel me? Yeah. Like, I just, it's just dope. Yeah. It, and that's, just like what you're saying, like, it's, it's in us to be a gentleman. Like, what is your problem? Like, why can't you process that? Where are you missing? Where are you lacking? Where are you lacking as a man that you don't understand that, that these are certain things you should want to I'm do? A, I'm gonna put the fellas up on a little bit. Fellas, date night, right? Give me the, give me the, give me the mic, give me the mic, T. <laughs> there we go, all right, so picking my girl up. Where we going? I'm telling her where we going. Yep. I'm telling her what to wear. Especially, if my girl asks me what should I wear, I'm gonna tell her. She's giving me power. And I and I and I appreciate it, and I'm gonna use it. I'm not gonna be like, oh, whatever you want. I'll never do that. I'll tell you, when I when I go and pick you up, fellas, when you pick your lady up, get out the car. So when she walks up to the door, you open the door for her. Yeah, you yep. know what I'm saying? Give her the respect of having your car clean, inside and out, and smelling good. Listen, like like your your car, your crib. When that smells good, that's the first stages of foreplay I'm telling you right now is you getting them ready smelling good everything smelling good you know what I'm saying and you know when y'all go wherever y'all going you know you handle everything that's that's what men do that's what gentlemen do the vibe is to be a gentleman you know what I'm saying chivalry is not dead it's not dead you at know all what I'm saying so and we need to if it is in certain spaces in, in our culture we need to resurrect it and bring it back because we need the protectors we need the, like, we gotta be like, I, I feel like the vibe for a man and a woman, the dynamic is for the man to be, I wanna be your best friend, your teacher, your lover, your guide, you know, to guide you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, protect you, provide for you, all of these things, you know what I mean? Because women are the gateway to heaven, you know what I'm saying? That's the vessel of life life comes from them you know what i'm saying That's real. and they are our first teachers our mothers you know what i mean so their role is so vast it's so important you know what i mean and in our society we're not taught to respect them but we should we should give them the utmost respect 
You know what I'm saying? They're precious. They're beautiful. We can't live without. I don't want to live in a world without women. <laughs> I just not nah, fuck it. Take me out of here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we gotta treat them. You know, they're delicate flowers. Treat them as such. But they're powerful. Women. I'm gonna say this. I know it's long, I'm getting long winded, but I want to say this. A man's dominion is over the world, over the planet, right? That's what we bring. A woman's dominion is over her si her child, right? Now, that's not like one's more important than the other. Because for a man to be able to reign and have dominion over the world, his world, he has to learn it from somewhere. He learns yeah. from his mother. That's his first teacher. And the father is there as well. But we first learn from our mothers, right? Women are powerful. If a man cannot exercise dominion, right? And he has a woman, really is like she has a man. He's not, he can't exercise his dominion. She won't respect him. And as she shouldn't. The everything is off. The balance is off, right? And he is her child. So he's just a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You feel me? He's fucking his mother. You feel me? I feel like that term had to have come from that. You know what I'm saying? Because there's <laughs> nothing positive about being a motherfucker. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Nah. And listen, like men, you know, we gotta we gotta be men, bro. We gotta work hard. We should be like, it shouldn't be easy. You know what I'm saying? To get a bomb, a dime, which you look at as a dime. You know what I mean? So that's a that's that's a problem I got with uh with like social media and everything mm -hmm. these days. Is I think a lot of men so think looks. it is a lot of men think it is easy. They, well, they can just go in there and they just pull one and then it's they, easy to have sex yeah but then and that's where it stops and it's like people y'all gotta stop with this shit man and that's where that's where ladies y'all y'all tripping y'all be doing some dumb shit a woman to give the best part of herself first of all is showing everything on social media there's no mystery anymore and you're you're, you're basically waving a flag saying this is what i got these titties and his ass it's like all right i seen it no thanks Everybody's seen it. I'm not interested. That's the crazy thing that trips me out with the social media thing, though, with like the girls. Mm. And then you hear them all complain about, oh, I can't find a good dude. It's like, look no, at what it's you, because look at what you're projecting. Look at what you're putting man. out there. Like, no offense, but man, why would he want you? Like, he doesn't see. I it mean, at if all. you're and, offended, I don't care. Yeah, and, and like, man, you like, got 500,000 followers, so everybody done seen it all. So, what makes you feel like, honestly, he really thinks that it's dirty? It looks dirty. Feel me? Like, I feel like you just promoting for your only fans and that's fine and that's fine it's nothing wrong with that i don't want it though i'm yeah. not interested man yeah and you know there's what I mean? nothing wrong with if, if you're promoting for that and that's your thing that's fine but then you can't get mad at me because i don't i don't like you said i don't want it i don't subscribe to that no thanks so you can't yeah. get mad at me for that yeah and then you can't say that there's no good men out there and, let, and i tell you like on my ascension up and my maturity growing up over the years it was a time i would deal with that woman but only to smash that's it I'm not taking you serious at all. You know what I'm saying? And listen, like, e anytime a woman is being like aggressive with me online, like hollering and all of this shit, or trying to show me whatever, I'm like, no thanks. I'm not interested. Because 100%, you message everybody that look like me mm -hmm. with the same shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. I don't, I'm the hunter. You're not hunting me. Mm -hmm. It's not happening. I go and hunt. So I'm going to identify who I feel like is a good woman, maybe, and then I'm going to go after you. I'm going to do the courtship. You don't court me. It's not a thing. You know what I'm saying? So, so like, the culture is fucked up right now, man. And people are just out there fucking just to be fucking. And that's not the vibe, bro. You know, it's one thing we talked about earlier, and it kind of ties into a lot of it. Like, um, I really feel like there's a generation that that's, that's missing that male presence that we would call, like, a big homie, like a ump, like all that. Mm -hmm. There's an entire generation that didn't have that. And it can go into, you know, whatever reasons anybody want to talk about, whether it be, you know, the um, systemic racism and, and the mass incarcerations, things like that. But there's an entire generation that grew up without a male influence to show them or to stop them when they're doing something reckless and say, nah, boy, you don't do it like that. You do it like this. Nah, you don't talk to her like that. You treat her like this. Because, mm. like, when we was coming up, if we did something reckless in the street, somebody who might not even been in our family would have snatched us up and be like, nah, bro, that's not mm. what you do. But there's a generation that didn't have that, and then with that male not having that, then you get a generation of females that don't know that that's what they should look for. 
So I think there's just an entire lost generation just all looking for something, but it all comes back to, like you said, the missing masculinity. There's that piece that's missing. That I, that's what I feel. Like there's, it's, it's somewhere down there, it's missing. And, right. and I think that the things like, like brothers like us that aren't scared to say, yeah, we're in our 40s, we're here doing this, and we telling you young boys, nah, this ain't what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Like you say, when you go on that first date, get out the car, open the door for the young lady. Like do these types of things. Like I'm cool with being that old head now to say that. I don't mind saying that because I think some of them, y'all need to hit us. Like for real. real. Yeah. Yeah, man. Our society is interest- very interesting, man. And now we live in a world of content, 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 right? So here you have, it's just a weird place because you have people that have developed these, they, they've, they've curated their spaces to where they're able to have a lot of followers, right? Then I see them squandering it by doing TikTok shit, like the trending song or the sound. It's like, bro, that's the best you could do with your content. You have nothing interesting to share with people. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's gotta be something interesting about you. You've built yourself up to this level and you're just doing just TikTok shit or, you know, People are, you know, shying away from, you know, really like giving people some sound, real advice with the fear of their shit being suppressed or whatever, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And it's like this, like nasty shit, silly shit, all of that shit is just throttled out in front of everybody. There's so much good information out there, but we just gotta look for it. And I share a lot of stuff too, even if it's not my content that is powerful, I share it. And I get y'all on my my podcast, mm-hmm. and we talk, and we broadcast. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a lot. Like I choose to use my energy for good. I choose to put out good energy, positive things for people. You know what I'm saying? You're never gonna hear me on here gossiping about other people. Yep. There's people that do that, which is weird. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Such a waste of time. And why would somebody want to listen to a gossiper, a male gossiper, right? Um, now. I'm not saying I don't want to misconstrue like entertainment news and all of that stuff. I'm into that. I like that stuff, right? But there's I'm talking about there's a whole genre of I don't even know if it's a genre, but there's creators that talk bad about people. They just find a little some little flaw about somebody or what they think is a flaw and they just try to expose it, yep. exposing this person or that person. It's like, "Okay, Mr. Perfect, Mm-hmm. Okay, Mr. Never Made a Mistake in Your Life. You know what I'm saying? So I choose to focus on the positive and share. Po- Listen, I got people's attention for however long. So while I have your attention, I'm going to give you something that I feel like is going to benefit your life yep. or make you laugh or make you feel better. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's what I need to be using my time and energy for. Not not like, yeah, look at this mother. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. But one thing I do want to say when it comes to like dating, right? People should have intentions, right? Everybody's at different stages of life. And people want different things, granted. But generally speaking, I think people want to find a significant other, somebody dope as fuck, that compliments them to share their life with, you know? But for young men, I'm not a woman, so I can't give y'all very specific advice, but I, I give you some advice. But for the for the fellas, if you ain't ready, you ain't ready. And you gotta be you gotta have the kind of self awareness to know, yo, can I hold it down? And express that to a woman as well. Right. Let her know, like, listen, this is where I'm at. Because mm-hmm. that's another thing that is um, a lot of dudes think is cool is like not keeping it real with girls mm-hmm. and, and bringing them down a path just because they're going a certain way. Right. Like, express your intentions. Have yeah. those intentions and express them. Just be honest. Be honest. Just honesty is everything. But like when you're young, you got your brain works so good try to absorb information, try to qualify yourself, try to become excellent at something. Make yourself valuable, make yourself, you don't wanna be the type of person to where your presence is not felt. That's not That's not a vibe. Yeah. You wanna be the type of person to where people are not, they don't want you to leave. We need you here. Enhance your surroundings. If fellas, focus on that, because that's what our women deserve. You know what I'm saying? So. When you walk in the room, your presence is felt like, oh, so and so's here. Mm-hmm. Let me straighten up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the vibe. So cats should be focusing on stuff like that, not body count. It's not a vibe. It's really bad. It's really bad because it's desensitizing yourself, and it's desensitizing these women to where women. You know how many times I hear women say, "I'm like a guy. 
I can just turn off my feelings and just da, 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 da. it's not that's good. Not cool. That's not good for the for, for cool. society. For yeah. women are strong, bro. Yeah. And if you get women fully activated and some masculine energy, whew, that's gonna be trouble. You know what I'm saying? You don't want that. You don't want women being becoming de- women. They're receiving. You know what I'm saying? It takes it should it should take a lot for a woman to open up her soul to a man to let a man inside of her. That should be a lot. It mm-hmm. shouldn't come easy. When that shit start happening easy, you have to sit and think about, oh, that's your girl. You had sex with her the first night or two of y'all hanging out. You're not unique. It ain't just you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She's conditioned for that. And that should not be the vibe. You know what I'm saying? Not that shouldn't be the vibe, man. So you have to think about that shit. How she learn all that freaky shit? <laughs> Big Mike taught me. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. All right, but look, man, I really appreciate you hanging out with me and sharing your wisdom. Um, I want my people to tap in with what you do. I mean, only if y'all want to make money. If you don't want to make money, just disregard. You know what I'm saying? But if they want to make money, how do they find you? So they find me on Instagram, uh, Kev underscore J. And then, like I said, the the website is thegovernmentcheese.org. So www.thegovernmentcheese.org. Um, but just hit me up on socials, DM me, um, email me, message me. Like I'm always responding. I'm one of the type of people like I love to get a game. So if somebody asks me a question, I'm always gonna answer. Like I want to help as much as I can. That's what I'm here for. That's real, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, man. You got a lot of good karma coming your way. Thanks for coming you. on, and I'll holler at y'all next time. All right, we out of here. Peace. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour.